Hello and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. We're here today to talk about a quick overview of IFR altitudes, which are a lot of abbreviations, and we are going to unpack those so you can understand them. Let's start with how we designate mountains for not mountains. This is determined by the FAA. You can find the information in AIM as far as what areas are mountainous, what's non-mountainous. In a mountainous designated area, they guarantee you 2,000 feet obstacle clearance above any obstacles. This is just showing you different areas of an airway. In a non-mountainous area, they guarantee 1,000 feet obstacle clearance. So how this applies is when we're flying on an airway, we are going to see a number of different altitudes. The first we're going to start off with talking about is the minimum and route altitude, or the MEA. This guarantees me obstacle clearance. Again, I just mentioned if it's non-mountainous designated, you get 1,000 foot clearance, 2,000 foot in mountainous areas. It also guarantees you reception of ground-based VOR navy. You can watch my other video for how those things work on the ground. There's another kind of MEA we see called the GPS MEA. And I'm going to show examples on a chart in a little bit here. But the GPS MEA, number one, gives us my obstacle clearance, just what I mentioned before. Also guarantees me the ability to communicate with ATC. This is helpful. Doesn't guarantee me the ability to receive any ground-based nav aids that might make up that airway. It is not for guaranteeing GPS reception. It has nothing to do with that. GPS reception goes a lot lower than the GPS MEA. I mean, there's approaches to many airports that use GPS. So that is not what the GPS MEA guarantees. Here is an example. There's going to be some yellow boxes drawing up here. These are all the different MEAs in this area. You can see them printed along these different Victor Airways. So that's an example of what they look like. They're just a number printed along the airway. Okay. Let's talk about another one, the MOCA. That's the minimum obstacle clearance altitude. And it, again, gives me the same exact obstacle clearance but it only guarantees me the ability to receive my ground-based nav aids within 22 miles of those nav aids, of those VORs. It also does not guarantee me any ability to communicate with ATC. Here's what it looks like. It has an asterisk right in front of the altitude. So there's a couple yellow boxes there. This is prefaced by that asterisk. So that tells me that it's a MOCA, and you can see it's below my MEA. Now, it might be fine for me to operate at that MOCA if I'm using GPS for navigation. I don't really need the ground-based nav aid reception. That's okay. I can still fly on that airway. So just have to keep in mind, it's not guaranteeing me the ability to communicate with ATC. Here's an example of what the GPS MEA looks like. We have the little G at the end. So you can notice uh, we have a T root, T276. The GPS MEA is at 7,000 feet, so that is going to allow me to be talking with ATC and uh, able to have obstacle clearance. But let's say there was icing or something and I had to go down lower. So it could go down to 6,500 feet and still be clear of obstacles. However, I wouldn't be guaranteed my, G, um, my communication ability with ATC. So that star in front of 6,500 is a MOCA. The 7,000 and G, that's my GPS MEA. If you have an MEA change, you're going to denote it by a T bar. So let's look at Quint intersection in detail. Let's say I'm coming in on Victor 357 and I need to change altitudes because at the other side of Quint intersection, the MEA goes up to 5,500 feet. How I would do this is I would notice the T bar at the end of the Victor Airway bar, and that tells me I need to change MEA. At that MEA change, I would begin my change when I am crossing the point at which I need to change my MEA, unless we have a minimum crossing altitude that exists. Now, the minimum crossing altitude is designated on the chart with a little X flag. So if you can't maintain the climb gradient that you need for an MEA change, and these are defined here, so if we're above 10,000 feet, 
I have to be able to climb at 100 foot from nautical mile. If I'm airplane can't climb like that, I could plan another route. I could begin my climb early. I could hold if ATC approves it. Any of those things are possible. And minimum crossing altitude is shown with an X flag, like this example at Jesse intersection. And at Jesse intersection, as an example, if I were heading north on Victor 231, at this point on the airway, I could be at 11,000 feet. Still, I could be receiving my nav aids okay and everything is cool with that. I'm getting my uh, communication, reception, everything's cool. So as I head northbound though, I encounter Jesse. And this says if I'm going north on Victor 231, I need to begin my climb so that at Jesse, I am at 13,000 feet. If we didn't have the uh, MCA, which is indicated by the X flag, if we didn't have that, then at the T bar, I would just begin my climb to 13,000 feet, as you notice up here on Victor 231, it's 13,000 feet. However, because Jesse has the minimum crossing altitude with that little X flag there, that tells me I need to begin the climb down here on this segment of the airway so that I am at Jesse at the Jesse intersection by 13,000 feet. Now, occasionally we see a maximum authorized altitude and that is just due to interference from other restrictions ATC might impose. So as an example, here is what they look like. We have a maximum authorized altitude uh, over here on these T routes of 15,000 feet, 15, feet. Ordinarily, we could use the T route up to the top of a low altitude and route chart, which is 18,000 feet. But in this case, we can't because there's an MAA that limits me to 15,000 feet. A minimum reception altitude or an MRA, that is just for using an off route nav aid to identify a fix. So if I'm navigating along this Victor airway and I'm at 9,000 feet and I need a ground based nav aid to identify an intersection, so real intersection, I would have to be at 10,000 feet in order to identify that point and it's probably some VOR that's off the chart over here. Um, but if I'm using GPS for navigation and knowing where Greel is, you know, then I don't really care so much about that. The way they designate that is they put an R flag coming out of the fix. Lastly, let's look at the AROCA or Off Route Obstruction Clearance Altitude. This is published for a latitude longitude grid and it's basically a reference for if we are going to not fly on airways, to still give us obstacle clearance for non-mountainous to mountainous terrain. And it looks like this, and you can see them published all over the charts, and each grid has its own Oroka. If I fly at that altitude, I should be clearing obstacles by this amount. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out more instrument flying tips and knowledge test prep help and practical test prep help. Have a good day.